one. Hey guys, Erica here with the Child Care Director Share Podcast. If you are planning on opening up your dream child care, you do not want to miss today's episode. We're going to talk a little bit about how to design your space. You're going to learn from the best of the best princesses in the house. And uh, we're going to we're going to kick it off live. There's Princess. So welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so for the folks that don't know you, Princess, tell folks a little bit about yourself and how you are the master of setting up child care centers. Well, I'm Princess Jeanette Zachary, and I will say that the name says it all. (laughs) I am really elated to be a part of the podcast. And um, a little bit about me, I started in 1989 with the birth of my daughter. Uh, A bundle of joy came, and out of nowhere, I didn't think that I can, you know, literally have kids. And when she came, it was the birth of... The, my life now is because of my bundle of joy. Like everything that I live for now is because the birth of her was the birth of my business. And it took me into a different mindset to where I was like, wait a minute, I can do anything. I had a baby. Now, now when I had the baby, it was like, now what do I do with her? Because I was modeling in New York City. I didn't know anything about kids. I didn't even like kids. My sister's kids were so misbehaved that I was like, wait a minute. I'm never having kids. I'm never. But I did want it to teach, though. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. But I, when my sister had her kids, I was like, wait a minute. I misconstrued the concept of what was developmentally appropriate and how do children grow and develop. And when I had my baby, I started getting very curious. I was like, wait a minute. So what do I do with her? So then I figured out, like, I need to go back to college. I need to go learn about childbirth. I need to learn about um, child growth and development, um, how children grow and learn, and, and just different things about children. So when I went to college, as I was having my baby, I got my degree, a four-year degree in early childhood and elementary. I learned so much. I fell in love with children. It became my passion. So I had another baby. Then I had another baby. <laughs> I had a baby in 89, a baby in 90, a baby in 91. And I'm telling you, I fell in love with children. Right now, today, you can't even separate me from children. Like this industry, the child care industry, is my passion. So becoming a millionaire in this industry, making millions, it wasn't because I was thinking about the money. It had nothing to do with financial driven anything. It was for the love and the passion of children because I wanted to find out what drives them. How do they learn? What do I do next? Like, how do I teach them? You know, different things like that. And by being educated, going to college and then hands on experience with my own children, I was like, okay, I can do this. I became strategic. I became like, I put strategies together. Um, Then I learned how to do a business plan. And I was like, wow, like I'm really into this business. And shortly after I had children, I opened up my own in-home daycare because I was like, wait a minute, I don't want to go to work. Because if I go to work, then that means somebody have to watch my baby. And back then, I was only 18 years old. I didn't know no better. I was like, I'm not going to leave my child in the hands of, you know, other people. What are they going to do with her? You know, they don't know what I know. You know, I went to college for this, you know. So um, I I did an in-home daycare. I uh, grew an in-home daycare to its full capacity where I had from six kids all the way to 18 kids. I grew out of my home. Because I had an in-home daycare, then a group home daycare. And by that time, my kids was one, two, and three, three, four, and five, five, six, and seven. I was like, all right, it's time for me to open up a daycare. I went into the industry of child care. And that, that was a whole new level in my life. That a whole new bracket of income, a whole different lifestyle. It was like, wow. Like, I'm in business. I'm a businesswoman. And then other people started asking me. They was like, well, hey, princess. They said, hey, princess, you are now a consultant. 
because I was helping people open up daycares, but I didn't know what I was. I was just helping people, you know, just being generous and teaching people how to open up their own daycare. They would always ask me questions like, how did you do it? I'm like, I did it because it's my passion. I did it because I love to do it. I did it because I wanted to not only take care of my children, but now I wanted to give that gift, sow that seed to other people's children. And then I was like, well, now I like other people's children. Okay. <laughs> Let me bring my sister's kids back in the picture now. <laughs> you know, so then I started to become a professional. Now I was the child care professional in this great industry, this multi-million, billion dollar industry of child care. So I'm like, okay. Now let me learn the business side of it. So I knew child care. I knew that I had a passion. So I'm like, okay, what's next? What is next? Pass me my book. What is next in this industry? And I started writing. And I, but I didn't know what I was going to do yet. I just started writing. I started writing all my thoughts. I started writing, you know, what I wanted to be. I started writing about uh, uh, building a child care empire and how to reach your dreams through child care. But I didn't know it was, it was called building a child care empire yet because I was new. Mm -hmm. And I was learning the industry. By that time, I went to a small business development center and I went to college. And I said, I want to learn everything. When I went to college, I started going to the small business development center, um, the SBA, the SBDC, everything. And I said, hey, what is my next step? Now teach me entrepreneurship. Teach me business now. Now I need to learn because child care, I thought, was just you just watch kids. Mm -hmm. I became a professional. And I said, no, I have a business. Now I need to know, grow up. You know how you grow up? I grew mm -hmm. and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a businesswoman. I'm an entrepreneur. Then I started not only um, writing my book, but I started teaching people. And I went to SBDC. And I'll never forget this. This man named Drew from SBDC. He said, you know what? You're a consultant. I was like, what's a consultant? What do that mean? He said, you're an expert in child care. I was like, wow. I said, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my next level. So I started teaching people how to open up their own daycares. And they started asking me, well, what's the first step? What's the second step? What's mm -hmm. the third step? So I became mm -hmm. a child care consultant. Yeah. Um, your whole life is literally the same as mine. Like I, everything I that you're that. just... Girl, honey, literally everything you said, I'm just like, this is right right down to my baby. I used to sell furniture. I, oh, I, if somebody ever told me I was going to love kids the way that I do and, and, and love this field the way that I do, yeah. I would have laughed at you at 20 years old. That would have, my oh, sister, had, my sister had her kids first and yeah. I was like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want no kids. That, that's a lot of work. And yes. oh my God, then I had my kid and you know how that love, that love is like, you just walked into a brick of walls and yes. um, yeah. So I feel all those things, all those things. Yes. Um, yes. yes. So that's, so it's very relatable, very relatable. Yes. So, um, and yes, you are an expert for sure. How many centers have you opened so far? Oh, Jesus. I opened about maybe 29 centers. Wow. Yeah, 29 that's... 29 centers. I think that's probably the record. I don't know anybody other than a chain that's opened yeah, yeah. 29 yeah. centers. So good for you. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners there, let's talk a little bit about what people need to think about. Like, let's say, right, we've gotten to the point where we know we want to open a center. Maybe we've gotten a loan and we're ready to kind of start going. So let's talk about maybe what do people need to consider when they're thinking about location and space? Well, I think the first thing that they need to consider, um, it doesn't have anything with location to do with location and space, but I think what people need to have first is the mindset. Mm -hmm. The mindset of, I'm really about to embark on a business. And not only a business, is developing a solid business plan. Mm -hmm. um, after you get that mindset and you say, well, okay, I want to open up a business, whether it's a child care business or a consulting business or a beauty salon, which I own uh, salon suites and barbershop and different things like that. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is what I love business, but I had to first have that mindset and then develop a solid business plan plan. And with building that business plan, it put thoughts like, I got to know marketing. I have mm -hmm. to know financials. I have to know uh, pies and, and different things like that, where it put me in a mindset of, okay, 
Now I need to be that advocate and that advisor. And I became all of that. And, and then I had to ask myself, is this the right business for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say, because a lot of the folks that listen to this channel are child care directors already, but they may yeah. not own their own center. So right. let's say they, they, they've got a good understanding of their business. Maybe, maybe not the, the, the business part, as you just mentioned, yes. but maybe the, 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 the child part. Maybe they understand the daily operations, right? So yes, I totally agree. Have a business plan and then also do what you did and I did. Connect with, for us here in Rhode Island, it's the Center for Women in Enterprise. But yes. whatever they call it in your, in your state, connect with one of those folks. Take some of those programs network. and start to get network. Yeah. Yes, There's network. also the, um, I don't know if they have this in your state, but the uh, 10,000 small business program. Do they yes, have that? Have yeah. Of commerce. So okay. that can get involved in your local chamber of commerce and your small yeah. business development centers. What I do is I connect with, uh, I'm going to just name a few like Kennesaw Business Association, Marietta Business Association. So mm -hmm. in each city and each county, I'm connecting with the business associations. And I'm also connecting with real estate agents and contractors because we mm -hmm. have to think about that also. When you open yeah. up your daycare center, are you going to need a contractor? Do you need a real estate agent to help you find and locate that that uh, perfect center for you, you know, mm. and it do if it's going to need work or not construction. So those are things to think about. But I will tell you this, any um, directors, anybody that's interested in opening up their own child care facility, familiarize yourself with the state and county rules and regulations mm. for child care centers. That's another thing. Once you tap into the rules and regulations and familiarize yourself with the, the book on the application application package for child care, that can guide you and help you to say, wow, I did not even realize that I had to have a floor plan, that I had to have a site plan. Mm -hmm. Those are different things that you want to learn. And that's why I said the rules and regulations is like your Bible. Yeah. And zoning, yes. definitely those zoning, zoning, zoning areas, right? Yeah. You have to know those city ordinance. Familiar. I go and visit them. Mm -hmm. I go and visit. I, I want to know the fire department, the building department, the health mm -hmm. department, the water department, everyone that's going to be involved with me building that child care empire, mm -hmm. they need to be in my circle. Yeah. So sure. I want them to know exactly, hey, I'm princess. I'm over here. I'm opening up a daycare. How can you help me? I friend them. All mm -hmm. of them. Friend them. Yeah. And it's important to learn that. And then hiring and, and, and recruiting an amazing staff. Start yeah. connecting with people. Go in different places. And I connect with a lot of people where I want to be in five years. So that way I can strategize. I can have a plan in place. I can be able to execute the plan. Um, just review everything. Revisit the plan. You know, things like that. So it's going to take that. You don't write a business plan overnight. No. That's going to take time. Because guess what, y'all? It's your roadmap to success. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing is once you have that business plan, you sometimes have to deviate and add pages and take out pages yes, as, as you go, right? as you go. It's yeah. not an overnight thing and you, it's not a, a get rich overnight. You know, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, the reason why I make the money and I'm able to live my dreams through child care because it was my passion and I loved it. And it didn't start mm -hmm. out like that. I just wanted to model in New York City. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't <laughs> thinking about children. And then when it when it became when it happened, I'm like, I like this, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, the other thing I, I, I want to tell folks, too, is. When you put your business plan together, you may have one plan, but fate might have something else. So you may grow slow, but you may grow fast because oh, yeah. that oh, also okay. happened, right? So that yes. happened to me and my sister. We opened up one center. Within six weeks, we were full in that one center. Yes. And yes. within yes. three months later, we had center number two, right? Yes. We didn't plan it. That was not part of the plan, but you know, that's just kind of how it went. And once you, once you know, like how you, you know, how you know, once you have that blueprint, that strat, that center number five becomes easy and number okay. six and seven, it's like, again, it's a blueprint. You've got it in your head. Now, yes. let me ask, let me ask you this question. Cause you've opened up so many centers. What is your favorite? 
build from the ground up, doing a, 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 a reno of a place or a turnkey? What's your favorite one? My favorite that I that I I'm telling I didn't mean to get into this, mm -hmm. but my favorite is is turnkey. Like I literally love to take buildings. I like projects, mm -hmm. so I literally like to take it from scratch and build it from A to Z. The mm -hmm. blueprints, building it, uh, the um, doing the drawings, and then from drawings, it, a gutted out building. And now I have to actually make the rooms, design the building. That's how I became the daycare design specialist. Yeah. That's another thing. Like, I didn't know, but it was like, okay, you're the daycare design specialist. I like to build them out. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'm not good at that. My sister's awesome at that. Thank God I have her. Um, but yeah, my Thank sister's the same way. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all need, but we all, right? We Here's all a lesson. Them. Here's a lesson right there, directors. You cannot do everything alone. You Surround can't. yourself with people who have got your back, have the skill set you don't have, what team? and then you can make amazing, amazing things happen for you, yeah. your team, and the kids, your That's community. Fine. So That's let's. Fine. I I, I want to talk about how do we pick a location? How do we figure out what space we want? So I like going into centers that were already centers. And flip because those are so quick. So for right. folks who are brand new and you're not don't have all this all of the skills that this lovely lady has here, that might be a good option too to get into a center. And gosh knows there's a ton of them selling right now. That's right. Get, yes. get into a center. It's the quickest, fastest way. Less less amount of investment. You know, certainly building from the ground up is a little more costly than a center that's already built out. Um, but let's talk about location and space. How did you know? How did you? That's how did my you favorite pick? thing to talk yeah. about. I will well, tell let's you talk right about now. it. I, I I like conversion, so I like converting buildings. It can be like uh, one of my buildings was a dental office, mm -hmm. and I knocked down a couple of walls. But the beauty about the dental office is they had so many bathrooms and so many sinks. They had the plumbing. Ooh, smart, yes. smart. The plumbing. <laughs> so I was like, wow, if the plumbing is already there, because that's your biggest expense, everybody, the plumbing. So if you can find a building that was either a doctor's office or a dental office and that plumbing is already there, you already have your baby room, you have your kitchen, you have that toddler room, you don't have to pay run pipes all underneath the um floor to 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 build that because that's very expensive but my favorite thing is location because i like to go places and find uh demographics and your target market like know your demographics know your target market and and the biggest thing about that is i like to find buildings that's right next door to schools or down the block from schools so that way you can partner with elementary schools and guess what's going to happen guys the siblings is going to come to you <laughs> she just dropped you just dropped so many nuggets right there yes yes yes, crazy yes 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 yes, yes. yes. On all of those things, all those things. Yes. And, and you know, the other thing is, I think here's a million idea, a million dollar idea we can get. We can get t-shirts that say, no one gets excited about toilets like a child care director yeah, right, or right. child care owner, right? You're like the plumbing. I'm like, girl, nobody gets excited about, there's 20 toilets in here sold. Where do I sign? <laughs> I'm telling y'all a true story. I went to a building and the owner was showing me all around and I'm excited. I'm like a toilet, a yes, sink. Yeah. Yes. And he's like, Ma'am, well, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't understand. You just see a dollar sign. You're like, right. save me 20. As soon as I saw the toilets and I saw the sinks, I was like, yeah. infant room, toddler room, preschool, yeah. Yeah. early threes that's still getting potty trained. A toilet is going there. A sink is going there. So you got to have so many toilets and so many sinks per um, your child's staff ratio. So yeah. if you have... 10 children, that's one to 10 for two year olds in, 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 it's different in every state. But mm -hmm. say in Georgia, for an example, it's one to 10 for two year olds. You're gonna wanna sink in that room and you're gonna wanna toilet in that room. Yeah, and, and you gotta have, have yeah, you gotta have vision. You gotta have vision to be able to walk in a building. So our biggest location was a car dealership. Yes! And 
Yes, yeah. It was a car dealership. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So we kept the bays. So we have these uh, huge doors that we can open when it's beautiful yes. out, and they go right on up, and the fresh air comes in. And it's, it's yes, awesome. that's so you gotta have you gotta have vision. You gotta have yes. vision. You and yeah. I have so much in common. So we much do. like like I think we're twins. We definitely I, definitely I, do. I, I did I did it have a car dealership as well, and I raised them bays, and I'm telling you, mm. and then we made it really literally. Uh, we did the Reggio approach, you know. Yeah. We did yeah. Montessori, so we needed all the air. We needed the, mm -hmm. the lights, you know. Yeah. Um, we had plants growing everywhere. I mean, just the the dynamics of it and being different and being strategic. Oh, parents love it. Have a niche when once you get that location mm -hmm. and you're starting your building. Uh, how how are you different? Mm -hmm. What makes me different from the rest? Seven reasons why we're different from the school down the street. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you're different. And what are you doing different? Are you 24 hours? Are mm -hmm. you just going to be traditional? The world is not nine to five anymore. Mm -hmm. Like we're working from ever since COVID. Literally, you have to work two and three jobs. You're working overnight. You're working part time during the day. You need, a parents need flexibility now. So all directors and owners, we have to provide that because we're essential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, too, for those who are struggling, you have to think about these new models, like you yes. said, like later later hours or um, yes. before and after school, like there were a Saturdays. lot of preschool programs. Saturdays. Saturdays. Like, yeah, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of other ways that you can bring in revenue streams to your centers. Like I keep seeing all these people on the Facebook groups, and I'm sure you do too, like, yes. oh, we're going to close, we're going to sell, we can't do it, we don't have kids. I'm like, how do you, how can you not get kids? Like, there's, like, a shortage, right? There's not, <laughs> there's there's a shortage of, of spaces for families that are looking. So, you know, you got to diversify, right? You got to, right. you got to be able to change it up. And everybody needs to now think about a surefire marketing strategy. Your marketing is like your biggest thing. And you know what a lot of people do? They say, well, you know what? I'm going to open up my daycare center, but uh, I'm not interested in marketing. I don't want to pay for marketing, you know, dollars. I don't want to pay for, you know, uh, 10000 or 20000 or even 5000 They don't want to put into the marketing, but you have to invest so that yeah. you can get that ROI, you know, that return mm -hmm. on your investment. You're going to have to invest in that marketing and put that marketing plan together, your website. Um, you don't have it all in your business plan. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about safety and regulations because that's a big factor when you're designing space. So let's talk a little bit about about that. How do you, how do you make sure it's safe? How do you... Um, meet the regulations, you know, there's fire codes and all those things. Right. The thing that I do first, and I and I teach this in my consulting, when I'm teaching people how to open up a daycare, I watch the things like um, safety, things like steps, um, your handrails inside the building. If your carpet is down on the floor secure, um, your floors, your tile, different things like that in your bathrooms, is it safe? You know, um, yeah. you got to watch for just... Uh, children getting their hand caught and stuff. The fence is the most important thing. I will tell y'all, when you think safety, think of right from the start and think of your playground. Because that's the first thing they check when they're coming out to do your licensing. They don't even check the building first. They go straight to the playground because that's the most hazards ever. And it's the most accidents. Yeah. So as far as safety goes, make sure the fence, make sure they're not getting splinters, make sure the hand not getting caught in anything, make sure there's no gaps and, you know, different things like that. Make sure no stumps is, you know, coming up, tripping hazards. All of those things, I strategically make sure that I'm dying my eyes and crossing my T's when it comes down to safety, but I, I target the playground first. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I just had a safety expert on um, about two hours ago, and we were talking about playground safety. Yes, she installs yes, playgrounds. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got. I'm telling you, I got to bring all the things to my to my to my people here. But I, you know, I got to help these child care directors. There's so many new folks joining our field, and I'm talking to you out there. We know, we know you. We see you. We are here. You're not alone. So these things that we're talking about are things that we know you face every single day. So yeah. let's talk about um the design of the inside space. Like maybe what do we need to consider in terms of what needs to be different from an infant and toddler room as opposed to older age groups? What, when you're doing design, what do you, you know, what are your advice there? 
I'm glad you asked that question because um, people will open up a daycare center and have no knowledge on what's developmentally appropriate. And, and that's a big thing. That's a big thing, directors, because we will buy toys and we will fill up that daycare with unnecessary things that we don't need. Less is best. So if we put exactly what we need, what's developmentally appropriate in our infant room, we're not going to put hard blocks in our toddler or our infant room. We're going to make sure we have soft toys. We have to make sure those cribs are safe. Now they look in those cribs. They make sure it's the safety um, measures for the cribs. You have to have certain type of cribs. Now, back in the days, you used to use those big toddler cribs. You remember back in the days? Now you have to have certain cribs that's... Uh, uh, safety product cribs. Not only that, we have to make sure the toys are developmentally appropriate. And now they're even looking at books, the large books and um, soft books, um, the books that little crackle and stuff like that that mm -hmm. make noises. Music is very important. They want, you want to make sure you have music. How I teach people is to make sure you have seven to nine curriculum areas in each and every room. And that mm -hmm. includes the baby room. You want to have science in the baby room. You want to have mm -hmm. music in the baby room. You want to have um, a, a housekeeping in the baby room, arts and crafts in the baby room, things like that, bubbles, you know, everything. Because science in the infant room is not like science in your after school room. Mm. So you're going to have to be strategic about that to make sure. And I, and I tell people, before you open up a center, start looking in the Lakeshore book, the school box book, the, you know, different um, of the, the stores where they sell all the toys and things like that, products for children. Start looking at those first and familiarize yourself so you have an idea what goes in each classroom. Yeah. Um, and two, the other thing is you can also, if you're really thrifty, you can also make some things too, like in oh, the infant yes. room. Oh my God, my, you know, we use the big Ziploc bags and secure them. We'll put oh, leaves yes. in there so they can crinkle them or snow so the kids can feel cold, but not, what you know. Toilet paper eaters. rolls. All, all, all the things. Toilet paper rolls, you can, yep. have that. you can put actual rice in it or beans in it. You know, people don't like to do that stuff no more. They don't like to create and make things. Like, you, kids love hands-on stuff. We got to yeah. go back in the days when they did Hooked on Phonics, you know, <laughs> and we was, I'm serious and we was making things everybody think now you have to spend a whole lot of money to yeah. open up a daycare center no be creative yeah. make things now and, and, yeah. and to me, cause she's awesome at making everything. I'm telling you, we have a rock climbing wall that we made from scratch. And somebody went and toured one of our schools and they said, wow, you have a rock climbing wall. Oh, yes, we do. And it was made from scratch. Yeah. Wood from Home Depot and I watched yeah. it with my own eyes. You know, so, I mean, you can make all kinds of stuff, you know, yeah. from scratch. You know, and that's why we help people from A to Z. And that's the blueprints, and that's the A to Z comprehensive plan on how to open up your daycare. And yeah. everything in the book says, you know, different things like t different type of child care centers, um, balancing and, and budget income, different things like that. Um, so let's talk about functionality when you're designing space. People need to think about that. So talk a little bit about how you think about how a room functions when you're, when you're setting up a center. Well, that's important because if you're thinking about the future, when you open up your daycare, have quality rated in mind. Don't just open it up. Open it up with a plan. Open it up with substance. Open it up saying, I am going to be quality rated. So when you're opening up a center, you want to make sure that the... the um, functional, the room is functional, meaning that you're not going to put music right there next to reading. Mm -hmm. So there's a science behind that to make sure mm -hmm. your quiet area is with the quiet area, you know, quiet um, curriculums, and then you have your loud. You're going to put blocks over next to music. You're going to put science over next to reading. And I love animals. Mm -hmm. We put animals in all of our classrooms. We have guinea pigs. We have rabbits. We have turtles. Every single uh, 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 dragons. We have all kinds of ant birds. Every classroom, ha geckos, every classroom has a different animal. And you know, kids get bored. They don't want to see the turtle the whole entire year. So we rotate the animals around oh, to make clever, a functional clever. classroom. Yes. Yeah, that's cl that's clever. Um, yes, so animals. let's, yeah, yeah. 
Children love to water plants. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So you want to have plants in all your classrooms. And just think, oh. even think about that environment. Like, yes. it makes it feel homey. It makes yes. it feel comfortable, right? So and real dishes from your house. Pots and pans. You can go to the Goodwill. Don't just mm-hmm. have the little bowls from um from Family Dollar and Walmart and School Box. Mm-hmm. Let these children have real practical life skills. You want to teach them like... They go home and they see mommy and daddy cooking with yeah. real pots and pans. And then they go to school and there's these little plastic things that's not even real. Now, yeah. what children love to do is go home and say, mommy, I was cooking with a real pot like yours. I was cooking yeah. at school like that, you know? So you want real things, real toaster, just cut off the cords. Yeah. You know, a real iron, cut it off the cords. Have more, implement Montessori more in our schools. Okay. Um... So let's talk about parent and community engagement because we know that's so important, right? So when we when we design our when we design our programs, we have to keep in mind like how do parents fit into this? How do we showcase these spaces to our parents like you had said earlier, making it be different than the daycare down the street. So, yeah, and then also the parent area itself in your center. Because there are some centers that don't even have a parent area. You You talk about that. that. (laughs) I got a good one. (laughs) Guess what we did today? Today, we designed a parent. um, we, We have a parent pampering program in our school. But today, we did a coffee and breakfast bar. For our parents. So when the parents walk in, they have a lobby in all of the schools. And as soon as they enter into the child care center where the reception is, is right there at the front desk, they can go to the right and go in our coffee bar. So it's a coffee yes. and breakfast bar. Every morning we have peppermints. We have the big Christmas tree we put up today. We have two chairs in case a parent want to sit down and they're waiting for their child. Or if a teacher want to do a parent-teacher conference for engagement, they go in this room and the room is beautiful. It has a refrigerator, a microwave, a coffee um, machine there with all of the beautiful cups. And, And not only that, they have peppermints, they have candy bars, different things like that. So everything that a parent can want or need Wi-Fi. The um, cameras are up there so you can be able to look around the school. Everything is in that room and you can sit down and relax and, you know, wait on your child or sit down if you want. If a new parent is enrolling, that's the type of environment that you want to bring that parent in. That sells your school right off the back. Because it's warm and comfortable. I was just going to say, Princess... God bless anybody who's on your block because you got the rock wall, the, <laughs> the parent room, the de, you know the design. You got it. You got it. You got it. Um, so yeah, so it's very hard to compete with people like Princess if you're not on your A game. So um, we have you know, she, playground too. Yeah, you know, so you you know you really shared a lot of valuable things here. Yeah. So let's talk about yeah you know, we talked about putting together this business plan. One of the things they have to figure out is how do we figure out budgeting and making a cost-effective design. So what are your your ideas ideas or thoughts there? Well, I, I don't, the one thing I want people to understand and know is that in the beginning, opening up, if you're coming from a director and you're a first-time um, child care center owner, Try not to to go over your budget. Try to keep in mind that you don't have to grow so fast and you don't have to put a million dollars in your center initially. It's okay to go to the Goodwill. It's okay to go to Walmart and Family Dollar or maybe the Dollar Tree. You can find so many things in there. You can find things on Facebook Marketplace. But you want to keep a budget in mind and don't go over that budget. If you say, I have... Uh, $30,000 or $50,000 that I want to put into a school, what we do is we help them find a building that they don't have to do any work to it. So we try to make sure we find a building with green space. Now, have the green space, and then it has a fence around it. All right, that's number one. Perfect budget, because now you're not breaking up concrete to put soil down and then put dirt down and then put grass down, and then you have to build your fence. So those are the things that you need to think about when you're creating your budget. I don't want to spend any money on my playground except to put hula hoops and bats and balls. If you don't have a climbing apparatus in the beginning, it's okay. 
Mm. The state rule in every state, as long as you have activities and you be creative, put an art easel out there and say they do art outside. Put mm -hmm. some bats and balls and hula hoops and jump ropes. Yep. All of those things are developmentally appropriate. Little sandboxes, things like that that you can put in the play playground. That's good mm -hmm. cost-effective budget. Then the inside of the building, try to find buildings where you, if you have to knock down a wall, you're knocking down one wall because there's a bathroom in this room. This room don't have a bathroom. They're two small rooms, but to open it up so that you can get eight kids instead of four kids, and it's only that one wall you have to knock down, and you know that sink is sitting there, it costs it down. $5 to knock that wall down. <laughs> Excellent budget. You knock that wall down, and now you have a class. You're making, you know, $255 or $300 per child times eight children in that one room. So when, yeah. you're, when you're thinking about opening up a center, write these things down on your budget. Write down exactly how much you want to spend per room. Normally, you can spend anywhere from $2,000 to $8,000 in a room. Mm -hmm. I like to start off with the $2,000. Yeah, and then you can go from there. Then yeah. you can grow. And as children come in and you're getting registration fees, then you add all take all them registration fees. Now I want to buy some really nice signs. Now, mm -hmm. six months from now, I want to have animals in all of my rooms. But you might not be able to start out like that. So you want to have a surefire budget in place. Yeah, and if, if you have a school, too, that has many classrooms, you can furnish, you know, two or three, fill them up, and then... Do an amendment. I have yeah. a school like that right now. Right yeah. now, literally, like you, you, you must be reading my mind. Well, the <laughs> I same. It. I told you it was the same. <laughs> I'll be the same because I have a school right now where I have one room set up and mm -hmm. I have three rooms. I'm gonna fill that one room up, and mm -hmm. then as we grow. We'll yep. open up the second room and the third room and the fourth room. So the room, the building has four rooms. It's a total of uh, 62 children, but with pre-K, you can have 82 children. Ooh. Right now, in that new school we just opened up a few weeks ago, we only have eight children. All right. Well, and when we grow and we get more children, we're going to open mm -hmm. up more classrooms. So that's a good idea. I'm, I'm so proud of you, and I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Because people think if they get a big building, oh, they're, they're, they're stressing themselves out on how do I supply this whole building. Mm -mm. Open up at yeah. least two rooms. You can have infants all the way to two, and you can have three all the way to 12. Yeah. Because and it, you know, and it depends on your yeah, and it depends on your state. So make sure, like you said at the beginning, check your regulations. But yes, even if you decide what what age group do you make the most return on, maybe if you then you start with that room. Maybe mm -hmm. if you make the most return on preschool or school age, start there and then build build your way as as you go. But yeah, um, as you go, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yes. So I, there's no I, problem with that. I know we could talk probably all day. <laughs> Um, is there anything you want to leave with the listeners before, um, before we uh, wrap it up today? I want to make sure you have an opportunity to share, you know, share everything you want to share. I, I would like to leave with the, um, poem, Langston Huge. It's life for me ain't been no crystal stair. And it's a, it's a poem geared toward a mom and a son. And I relate that to child care, and I'm getting ready to do a conference and a, a seminar. And in my seminar, I'm going to open with Langston Huge, and I'm going to let everybody listen to the song and the words of the, of the poem. Because what it relates to with me and resonated with me with child care is perseverance. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. But you cannot quit. You have to keep going. And, it, and if the, and if the, the struggle comes in these hard times, you have to have that tenacity. And it takes tenacity. It takes strong will. And it takes a really, really good mindset. And, and, and being around like-minded people, other child care directors and other people that's owners or somebody where you want to be five years from now. So mm -hmm. don't quit. Yeah, do not quit. <laughs> do not, yeah, do not quit. Do not quit. It's not um, easy, but we can do it. Yeah, so Tanika had told me you have a conference, maybe you're putting together a conference, you have a conference coming up. We have uh, a monthly workshops and seminars, okay. and we're putting it together a conference in mm -hmm. New York City. 
and it's going to be on the billboard, Times Square, <laughs> everything. So we're putting that together in 2025. But until then, we're trying to join different podcasts. We love you, twin. Aww. So we definitely want to be on the podcast here as much as we can. We want people to know that you can lead how to live your dreams through child care. Yeah, and so sure. we're going to be doing these monthly workshops. We're going to be giving tips and, you know, different things like that for free, you know. Um, and we make the, the seminars and the workshops really, really reasonable. And we yes. also have Let's Talk Child Care. So every single month, people can come on and we, we just talk about child care, the good, the bad, and the not so good of child care. Yeah, yeah. Child care. I love it. I love it. Every, I don't know how we... Every I don't know... Yeah, I don't know how we um we didn't meet before. So that's every Wednesday. Where is that? Is that on Instagram? No, every Wednesday it's gonna be. Well, they will be filming live from Instagram, but we we'll start next Wednesday. We'll start it. Uh, well, we've been starting it, but we stopped. So we're gonna start it back up next Wednesday. And okay. every single Wednesday we come on. Let's talk child care. The good, the bad, and the not so good. It's gonna be on Zoom. It'll Zoom. be on okay. Facebook Live, and it'll be on Instagram Live. Okay. But we're going to sit around and we're going to talk. Let's talk child care. Hey, everybody, come and talk to me. I will okay. give you how I started, the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, okay. uh, how I had a fire and, and lost everything and became a millionaire afterwards. Yeah. Well, sometimes we need those things that really help us see our vision and yeah, and, and focus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Um, Tanika had given me some info about your upcoming conference. I would, yes, I would November love to be part 16th. of that. I would love to be part. So we're going to definitely connect on that. And yes. um, so that's it. So to our friends out there, cause we're going to, we're just going to chat for a minute after y'all leave, but um, thank you as always for tuning in. And remember it's the small details that make a big impact on the success of your child care business. Yes. Everybody building a child care empire. <laughs> How to reach your dream.